So I brought everything in Excel to make things a little easier. Um, it says, suppose you want to buy a $157,000 home. You find a bank that offers a 30-year loan at 4.5% APR. So APR is annual percentage rate. Um, now we can use a formula in Excel. It'll make it pretty easy for us. But first we need to find the inputs for the formula. So the present value of the loan is basically how much you're getting a loan for, $157,000. Then N is your number of periods. So if you have more than one payment per year, you have to adjust your N. Um, N is usually in the form of one payment per year. So the number of periods is actually going to be 30 years, but times 12 months per year, giving us a total of 360 payments or 360 periods over the life of that 30 years. The rate is also presented as an annual percentage rate. So you have to divide it by 12 monthly payments because that rate applies to the entire year. You need to find the rate per month. So it's going to equal the 0 0.045 divided by 12. Oops. Which, here, let me change my decimals. There we go. Okay, and then your future value is going to be zero because at the end of the loan, you're going to expect to have paid it off. So you're going to expect not to owe anything less, only owe anything left, and it's going to be zero at the end. So now we can use a formula called um, the payment formula. We put equals PMT, and then it wants you to select your rate, comma, your number of periods, or the number of payments, 360. Your present value, which is the value of the loan. Your future value, which you expect to be zero. And then if it doesn't tell you whether payments are at the end or at the beginning of the period, you assumed the end. It will only be at the beginning if it tells you otherwise. And so you would expect to pay $795.50 per month over 30 years. Then it wants to know how much you would end up paying the bank for the home after 30 years. In other words, what's the total amount you paid over the 30 years? Which is really easy. It's going to be equal to your monthly payment times the number of payments you made or the number of periods, 360. And so you paid $286,378.54 over 30 years, which is significantly higher than the original loan amount of 157000 so now it says you want to reduce the term of your loan to 25 years. What would be your new monthly payment? So everything's going to be the same, except we're going to change the, your in, your number of periods. So the present value is going to be the 157,000 still. Okay, but now for the number of periods, it's going to be 25 years times the 12 months per year to bring it to 300 for the period. Okay, your rate is going to be equals the... 4.5% per year, but divided by 12 months. And again, let me show my decimals. Okay. And then the future value, again, you would expect to be zero. So this is saying the monthly rate is going to be 0.375%. So to find the new payment, again, we use the payment formula equals PMT. Your rate. You highlight, comma, the number of periods, comma, the present value, comma, the future value, comma, and again, we want at the end of the period payments. You would expect to spend, um, for it to cost you $872.66 per month. That's more than the $795.50 you would pay over 30 years. And now it wants to know how much you would end up paying for the bank for the home after 25 years. In other words, what's the total amount you paid over the 25 years, which is just, again, your monthly payment times the number of payments or the number of periods, which is going to be $261,797.10. Now, comparing this to the amount, total amount you would have spent on the 30-year loan, it's significantly less. 
And number five wants us to find out by how much. How much did you save by reducing the length of your loan? So that's just the total paid over 30 years minus the total paid over 25 years would give us the difference between the two or how much you saved. So you saved almost $25,000 just by shortening the length of your loan and paying a little bit more per month. In the end, you ended up saving about $25,000 in, in interest alone. So that's pretty significant. So you always want to take the shorter loan with the higher monthly payments because it's going to end up costing you a lot less in the end.